Hey, so this is part two of a short series on how to do video playback. And in this particular portion of it, I'm gonna cover how we do playback of a video that has an alpha channel, which basically means that it has transparency information as part of the file. So you have parts of the, of the file which are opaque and you can see them, and then you have other parts of the video which are transparent and the underlying video shows up behind them and then anywhere in between. So, so to kind of give you a feel for what this looks like, I'm just go ahead and show you. So this is the file we're actually gonna be working with today, here today. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be using as part of the demonstration. So this would be used as lower third. You've probably seen this as part of our stream team series here on the channel. Uh, but this is a file which uh, is partially transparent. There's par par portions of it which are partially transparent. And, it is if you look, and if you look at it, you can see there are portions where the background video is allowed to show through. Uh, and that's something that's impossible, next to impossible to do with an alpha, uh, sorry, with a Luma key or a chroma key. And so it really requires an alpha key to do that. So we'll just dive right in and show you how this is done. Okay, so I've actually already downloaded this file. Uh, it's a graphic from Digital Juice. That's the company that I use most often for this sort of thing. And I've already preloaded it here into Premiere. And from here, it's going to be fairly easy to, to do an export on it. So I'm going to take, grab the file and then just drop, drop it over here into ti the timeline. That will create a brand new timeline that matches the settings of the file itself. But with that said, this file doesn't match the file that we need, file format that we need for our switcher. So I need to go up to the sequence menu, choose sequence settings, and I'm going to need to tweak my settings a little bit in order to make them work. Uh, for my video switcher. So this video that we're shooting here today is at 29.97 frames per second and the frame size is 1920 by 1080 and I'll go ahead and click OK on that and now we have a sequence which matches the video format that we're going to be that we're actually shooting here today. Now the downside to having a file which is bigger than the sequence is that it's going to be clipped and so what we need to do is we need to right click here and say scale to frame size and then the graphic actually does fit. So this is the proper size and it will show up properly in the final rendered video. Uh, now as to how to tell if the file actually has transparency information. Now as I scrub through here you're basically seeing the file with all the transparency information already applied but if we want to see what the actual native file looks like and go into the directory that file is stored and if I double click on that, you can see that there's a lot of noise, a lot of just randomness going on there. And the reason for that is this software, this uh, playback software that I'm using right here, is not aware of that alpha channel. And so it's showing all of the raw video without any of that transparency information applied, which means it looks very, very weird. Um, but Premiere is aware of the transparency information. So when it played back, it actually looks a little bit more organized and it looks the way that it's meant to. So with that said, with this proper sequence set, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the file menu and say export media. And the trick to making this work is making sure that you export in a file that support, the file that's both supported by the HyperDeck Studio Mini and also supports trans transparency information. So in that case, that's going to be a QuickTime file, and we're going to use preset Apple ProRes 4444 with alpha. And alpha basically means it has that transparency layer as part of it. So with that said, I'm going to give this a file name. So I'm going to say lower third with transparency. On MOV. And at that point, I'm just going to go ahead and export that file. Now, this isn't going to take this isn't going to take too long. All right, now I've actually cheated a little bit and pre-rendered the graphic, and so I'm going to show you what that actually looks like. So, in on the two lower windows on the screen here, that's what's coming out of the HyperDeck. So, the lower left corner that is basically the graphic itself, and then that second box to the right of it, the one that's black and white. That is the alpha key. So that's basically the one that has the transparency information. And basically what's happening there is everything that is black is transparent and everything that is white is opaque. And so if I overlay that on top of the video and if I go into the downstream key, set that up and hit 
the auto button. There it is. So it's actually combining the graphic with the alpha channel and giving us the result that we want. Now, in terms of how to set this up, let me, let me turn that off. Uh, I'll show you guys what I've done here. So you can't, I know you can't see it, but camera five is the graphic and then camera six is the alpha key. And so what I'm gonna do here is go into the downstream key portion under the palette section of the, of the software. And I'm gonna choose camera five as my fill source, camera six as the key source. And then we'll, we're gonna need to tweak these uh, settings down here a little bit. Uh, I found that a good starting point is clipping point of 50% and the gain of 25%. That kind of gives you uh, a good place to start, but you may want to tweak those settings uh, as well. Uh, clipping is basically where it transitions from opaque to transparent, and gain is shifting that point up, uh, basically up and down. Um, so anyway, uh, with, with those set, I can turn on the downstream key, so I'm just going to say on air, and there it is. So the graphic is there, it's there set up and ready to go. Now, uh, let's actually take a look at the HyperDeck itself, and I'll show you what I've done in terms of connections there. So the HyperDeck itself has two video outputs on the back. Uh, output A, that's always your main graphic or your main video or whatever, and then B, becomes the alpha channel whenever you're playing back a video clip that actually has one. And if your video clip does not have an alpha channel, that's going to be basically, basically be outputting the same as channel A. So you basically get two copies of the video when you're doing that. But the minute you pop in a card that has uh, files that have that alpha channel on there, channel B becomes the output for the alpha channel. And so therefore, you're able to output both that key and the fill. The key is the alpha and then the fill is the actual graphic itself on one device. And of course that's synchronized up and so you, you can always make sure that they're each on the same frame. So anyway, with that said, that's the kind of the gist of it. That's sort of how it works. Um, if you have questions about this, you can leave those in the comment section of the video down below. I know this has been fairly quick, but uh, again, a lot of the foundation of how to do this is covered in portion the first portion of this video, the first half of the video. So if you haven't seen that yet, please go, go watch that over there. So if you're new to the channel, please, please uh, consider subscribing. Do video production related content at least three times a week uh, between me and my friend Wit. And we're covering both the basics and the more advanced topics like this one on the channel here as well. So uh, please also, uh, before you go, uh, be sure and share this video with other people uh, who might be in the video production world or might or maybe wanting to learn this kind of thing. And also be sure to like the video as well. And if you take a look in the video description down below, there is a lot of information there that's very useful. So there's links to my website, uh, which includes some other tools, some free software. There's also a mailing list there where you can be notified of new videos that are being released. Uh, you get an email whenever we put out a new video. Uh, Patreon sub, uh, subscribers, the patrons, also get early access to these videos. So the videos go up in a day early, and they get to watch them without ads. So if that's something you're interested in, it would be very helpful, very very beneficial to the channel to sign up as a patron on Patreon as well. So anyway, I think that's about it. So anyway, thanks guys for watching, and have a fantastic day.